Welcome to Leading the Way, a video series about addressing challenges in biomarker testing. Today, you will hear important insights about biomarker testing standardization in advanced ovarian cancer from Dr. Michelle Schiller, a molecular pathologist at a major academic institution. Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Schiller, and I would like to share some helpful tips on how you can standardize biomarker testing. I have spearheaded improvements in several biomarker testing processes within my healthcare system. I did this because while attending tumor boards, I realized that we often did not know which patients had been tested. Testing is a vital part of care, and without this information, we would not be able to make the most informed decisions for our patients. We wanted to ensure that everyone received the same high standard of care. So it became clear to me that we needed a better approach. Today, I would like to share my experiences with you. In this series, I share strategies that my team and I use to standardize testing for homologous recombination deficiency, also referred to as HRD, in patients with advanced ovarian cancer. Here, I will share the step-by-step -step process we use to develop a standard protocol for testing. Our team agreed that our current approach was not adequate to ensure that all appropriate patients were tested. A standardized approach, including choices around whom to test and what assay or assays to use, could help us fix this problem. But we needed to align on what approach would be best for patients at our institution. We followed a step-by-step -step approach to develop reflexive orders, which are standing orders for biomarker testing based on the preferences of the clinical team. First, I sent an invitation to the multidisciplinary team that announced the topic along with reference materials that could be reviewed before the meeting. Next, during the meeting, I summarized all relevant clinical data and guideline recommendations. We also discussed lab capabilities, specific assays, and costs. The team also considered access to these tests and how efficiently they could be performed. Then, I opened the floor for questions. When the conversation indicated that a decision needed to be made, I asked the team to vote on who should be tested and what assays should be used. All voting was anonymous, and the pathology team abstained from voting. I drafted a standing reflexive order based on the consensus reached by the clinical team and shared the result with the team for review. The final order reflecting the desires of the clinical team was then submitted to the administration for approval and implementation. Once this new standardized approach was in place, we were able to test more patients and could better tailor our therapeutic approach to match each patient's disease. Treating physicians expressed greater satisfaction in their work and pathologists enjoyed having clear processes and protocols. To hear more about approaches to testing standardization, please click the link below.